Welcome to part two of the lesson on resistance. And in this part of the lesson, we're going to take a look at the resistance of an ohmic conductor, that's one that obeys Ohm's law, and a non-ohmic conductor. We're going to use a filament bulb as an example. During the lesson, we'll find out how we can use graphs of current and voltage to help us work out resistance. Let's start with a simple ohmic conductor, a resistor. If I want to measure the characteristic curve, IV curve of the resistor, I could use a circuit like this. I would measure the current passing through the resistor and the voltage across it. And I can change the applied voltage using a variable power supply and build up a table showing what currents pass through the resistor for different applied voltages. And the table might look something like this. So this table tells us, for example, that when a voltage of 1.5 volts is applied, the current through the resistor is 0.9 of an amp. We can turn this table into a graph. The convention is that the current goes on the y-axis, the voltage goes on the x-axis, and we plot our results and the result is called a characteristic curve or IV curve. In fact, for an ohmic conductor, it's a simple straight line through the origin. And the fact it's a straight line through the origin tells us that I is proportional to V, which is a way of stating Ohm's law. So the question is, with this table of, of results, can we work out the resistance of the resistor? and resistance is voltage divided by current. Each pair of readings, voltage and current, gives us a value of resistance. Let's actually work out what we get. So, if I divide 0.5 volts by 0.3 amps, the resistance comes to 1.67 ohms. And I hope it's no surprise that we get the same result for each pair of readings. The resistance is constant because the resistor obeys Ohm's law. That means the ratio of voltage to current is constant. So that's a nice easy situation where the resistance stays the same whatever we do. Let's look at a slightly more difficult problem though. Suppose we repeat the measurements but using a filament bulb. So we apply different voltages and measure the current through a filament bulb. A typical set of results would look like this. And as you see, the voltage on the left, the current on the right, if we plot the current against voltage, we don't get a straight line through the origin. We get a curve. It starts off at the origin, but then curves. And this tells us that the filament bulb is not obeying Ohm's law. The current is not proportional to the voltage. What about the resistance of the bulb? Well, I can work out the resistance for each pair of values. For example, the first pair, 0.2 volts divided by 0.25 amps, gives us a resistance value. And I can repeat that process. Let's do it. OK, we've put the resistances in. So for example, 1.4 volts divided by 1.65 amps gives us 0.848 ohms. If you look down the resistance column, I hope you can see what's happening. The resistance is gradually increasing as the, volta volta vol sorry, as the voltage and current increase. And that's typical of a filament bulb. The resistance gets bigger as the bulb gets hotter. And if you want to look at the lesson on IV curves, you'll find the explanation of why the resistance increases as the voltage and current increase. Let's go back to the resistor that obeys Ohm's law. Here's its current voltage graph. Straight line through the origin. If I wanted the resistance, I could pick any point on that graph and say, right, at this point, there's a certain current that flows through the resistor and a certain voltage being applied. I can read off the current from the current scale 
read off the voltage from the voltage scale and I know the voltage and current at that point. The resistance is therefore V over I the value of voltage at that point divided by the current at that point. But look, I hope you remember what a gradient of a straight line is. This is a straight line through the origin. The gradient is what we call the rise divided by the run. And in this case, the rise is I. The run is V. So the gradient of this line is simply I over V. Resistance V over I, gradient I over V. I hope you can see that the resistance is simply the reciprocal or the inverse of the gradient. R is 1 over the gradient. So if I have a current voltage graph straight line through the origin, we work out the gradient and the resistance is 1 over the gradient. Incidentally, if you do work out the gradient, it has units. The units would be ohms to the minus 1. In a practical situation, you may be measuring the resistance of something and you'll measure voltage and current, plot them on a graph and you won't get a perfect straight line through the origin. What you do is you do a best fit straight line through the points. And then we can use the same principle as before but the resistance is 1 over the gradient of the best fit straight line. And that's a good way of averaging out the random errors. And this is a common data analysis technique. We plot a graph, draw a best fit straight line, and work out the gradient or some other feature, maybe an intercept of the best fit straight line. So that's the way you should do it in a practical investigation. Sometimes it might be convenient to reverse the voltage and current axes. You could put the voltage on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis. Now that's not the conventional way of doing it. But if you do, note that the gradient of the straight line is V over I. If you plot the graph this way around, resistance is V over I, gradient is V over I, so in fact the resistance equals the gradient. In that case the gradient would have units of ohms. Let's think about how we can find the resistance from a characteristic that's not straight but curved. For example, a filament bulb. Here's a characteristic here in white. The resistance will depend where we are along the characteristic. The resistance changes. Let's look at this point here. At this point, there's a certain current. You could read it off the current scale. And a certain voltage being applied. Read it off the voltage scale. So at this point we know what the voltage and current are. So if we wanted to calculate the, uh, the resistance at this point, the resistance is voltage over current, V over I. But supposing we join this point to, an, to the origin, so we draw a straight line from the point to the origin. We've shown it in yellow on the picture. That line is referred to as a chord. The gradient of the chord is rise I over run, V. So, the resistance is V over I, the gradient of the chord is 1 over, sorry, I over V. That means the resistance is 1 over the gradient of the chord. So if you have a curved characteristic and want to find the resistance at any point, you draw the chord, find its gradient, and resistance is 1 over the gradient of the chord. Some students think you can find the resistance at a point by drawing the tangent to the curve, finding the gradient of the tangent and using 1 over the tangent's gradient. That's not true. You've got to use the chord itself. There is one case, however, where the tangent will give you the correct value. If you want to know the resistance for very small values of voltage and current near the origin, the limit of the resistance when V equals zero, you can draw the tangent to the curve at the origin. And then the resistance is one 
over the gradient of that tangent. But that's only true when you're dealing with the tangent at the origin. Otherwise, you use chords. OK, I hope you found that useful, and I hope you know more about resistance than when you started. Thanks for watching.